The United Kingdom supports the idea of authorizing Ukraine to strike targets in Russia with British supplied Storm Shadow missiles but does not publicly promote it, fearing the deterioration of their relations with the United States. In particular, UK Prime Minister Keir Starmer is taking a consultative approach to negotiations with the US on the relevant authorization. The Telegraph, citing sources in the White House and the UK government, reported this. Journalists noted that UK Prime Minister Keir Starmer does not want to provoke a row and is taking a consultative approach to negotiations with the US on the relevant authorization following diplomatic scandals under the previous Conservative government. A White House source told The Telegraph that the administration of current US President Joe Biden is concerned that Ukraine's use of Western weapons in the war against Russia, even without US approval, could escalate matters and lead to the involvement of US troops in the war. At the same time, journalists report that earlier in the summer, the UK government requested that the US soften its stance and authorize Ukraine to use missiles against targets in Russia. According to The Telegraph, the US privately expressed frustration with the UK's hasty position on the matter of supplying military equipment to Ukraine. The Telegraph's sources also highlighted that the UK's decision to be the first Western country to donate main battle tanks to Ukraine, along with its support for supply flying F-16 fighter jets had raised concerns in Washington. Officials felt the UK was attempting to pressure them into making similar decisions. The Storm Shadow Stroke Scalp is a long-range air-to-ground missile developed by the UK in France. It is designed to strike stationary targets such as well-protected bunkers defended by air defense systems. The missile features a 450 kilogram warhead and can be used around the clock and in all weather conditions. The Storm Shadow can also be mounted on Soviet-era Ukrainian jet aircraft. The authorization to strike Russian territory would enable Kyiv to create strategic uncertainty for the Kremlin. Additionally, the arrival of F-16s in Ukraine, particularly with the capability to target aerial threats over Russia, would substantially bolster Ukraine's air defense capabilities. Such authorizations open up new prospects for Ukraine's defense forces. Some military analysts argue that Ukraine could effectively limit Russian aircraft activity if it could strike targets at least 80 kilometers downrange. This year, among the spectacular events is the Ukrainian invasion of the Kursk region, coupled with a wave of powerful missile and drone attacks. In particular, military airfields, ammunition depots, oil refineries, Fuel storage centers and even Moscow have been hit, writes Edward Lucas, a consultant specializing in European and transatlantic security for the Times. They sank the only major ferry linking Crimea and a valuable Kilo-class attack submarine anchored in a supposedly well-defended Russian port. The rest of the targets were left smoldering. Red lines, taboos and prejudices. He said, at the same time, according to the expert, everything is no longer the same because Ukraine has not only changed the situation with the Russian Federation, but also confused the timidity and pessimism of its allies. Lucas believes that if Ukraine manages to stop Russian forces, it will be able to lure 3,000 Russian soldiers into a cauldron in the cursed region. Once captured, they could become useful bargaining chips for the many other Ukrainian POWs in Russia. More than 130,000 have been evacuated from Kursk, spreading their tales of chaos and humiliation across Russia and highlighting the gap between the Kremlin's lies, machine and reality. Putin had to withdraw air defenses from Crimea to protect Moscow and other towns in the Russian hinterland, the consultant said. In turn, the most alarming thing for the Kremlin, according to the expert, is that the leader of the private army mercenaries, Paladin Georgi Zakrevsky, criticized the war, calling Putin the so-called president. He repeated the disagreement that was previously heard from another military leader, Yevgeny Prigozhin, whose attempted coup also shook the Kremlin. According to the expert, the Russian Federation has been characterized for decades by poor decision-making as their regime is unable to respond to crisis situations. The key to success in Russian organizations is to hide bad news from the boss. 
No one dared to tell Putin on the eve of a full-scale invasion in 2022 that Ukraine would fight. You can bet that no one told him in full and in time how much the Nazi puppet regime in Kyiv is hurting Russia now, Lucas said. He noted that the West is now talking about solidarity with Ukraine, but is trembling at the prospect of what could be a victory, perhaps chaos in Russia or the replacement of Putin with someone worse. Zelensky's gambling should focus our minds. Whether we like it or not, our chips are on the table too. The analyst concluded.